Hello everybody. Thank you for watching. This is my second video of my quick studies tutorial series and this one will be focusing on cut and batches and I have much more videos coming soon so please like and subscribe if you haven't. Thank you and I hope this video helps you. Hello and welcome to my second quick study guide here on Disco Diffusion settings so this one is going to focus on cut in batches this cut in with the slash and then batches and you can set it from one to eight it recommends a default of four so how zippy's diffusion guide describes this each iteration the ai cuts the image into smaller pieces known as cuts and compares each cut to the prompt to decide how to guide the next diffusion step more cuts can generally lead to better image since dd has more chance is to fine tune the image precision in each time step. Additional cuts are memory intensive, however, and if DD tries to evaluate too many cuts at once, it can run out of memory. You can use cut in batches to increase cuts per time step without increasing memory usage. So basically um, that that's true, but it still will increase the memory usage if you turn it up. It's just saying it wouldn't increase it as much as if it was doing the actual time so this is just something that was kind of built into the program but it says the default setting it's going to do 16 cuts but if it's set to one there will only be 16 but if you set it to four it will do 64 so base because it will divide it into four so basically it's saying it will give you more cuts than it normally would but each one you increase it will take a lot more time so let's just go ahead and get right into it here. Let's go ahead and just do some demonstrations of it so we can actually see what it does. And now my personal opinion on this setting is that it should never be higher than two because it causes extra render time. And I don't feel that the results you get from setting it up are always going to be better. They can be sometimes, but the, the difference is so negligible to me. I don't feel it's ever really worth putting this above two but we'll go ahead now and do a study we're going to start it at one so i usually keep it at one anytime now i'm doing an animation because this it does add a lot of render time each time you turn this up a step so that's just why that's another reason that kind of drives my opinion on it and you can also do other things to kind of add more detail that don't take up memory but let's just go ahead and run it okay our render is winding down here and it's taking about 1.5 seconds per iteration and it looks like it's going to take around two minutes for this one. It's just about done here. And that's a pretty decent looking image there. I think there's plenty of detail there actually just for what it is. And that's just at one. And that took almost two minutes. Okay. So now let's go ahead and we'll go change that cut and batches up to two. Yep. That took just under two minutes. And it was doing about 1.4 a or was taking about 1.4 seconds for each one. Now we'll go ahead and run it with two cut and batches. And we'll come check on it when it's done. Okay, and our render here is starting to wind down. And if you'll notice, it does definitely look a little bit better than the last one, more detailed. And my calculations were just about right. I said it looked like it's going to take about a third as long. And this does look like it's going to take right around three minutes. So this added about another minute just for this one frame. So you got to think if you're doing an animation of 200 frames and you turn the cut and batches up from one to two, that's going to add one minute to every single frame you're rendering. So just a 200 frame animation, um, increasing that from one to two would add 200 minutes to your render time for the animation. So that's why I almost always keep it on one. For animations and I just try to get as good a detail as I can using other ways so let's go ahead now and do one more maybe two more yeah I'll do two more I'll go ahead and turn this one up to four we're gonna go ahead and double it okay so here is again is the cut and batches so that one was two we're gonna go ahead and change this one to four okay our render is slowly winding down here now if you notice this took almost twice as long this is now taken it's going to be right around the five minute mark to render this. So there is some more detail. You know, you can see there's more detail. There is also some, you know, that signature anomaly there. And yeah, it looks like five minutes right on the dot for this one. So this is why when I see um, tutorials that are for beginners and they recommend just leaving the cut and batches on four, I really advise against that, especially when you're first beginning, because the best way to learn Disco Diffusion is by making a lot of renders. And if you leave the cut and batches, at four when you're first starting out you're going to be doing 
you know, it's going to take you four times as long as someone who's putting it at one or two for each render you do. So I really recommend most of the time leaving that at two. Now I do crank it up to four and six sometimes just if I want to see what it does or to get a real detailed image, but it does come at a huge time expense and I have Colab Pro Plus, so it can also even crash it if you don't have enough memory. So I really, I my recommendation on that is try to find a different way to get the detail other than the cut and batches. Okay, and here is the final render here, which I cranked it up to six, and this one took around seven minutes to render. So it's a nice looking image. I don't know, you know, if it's a whole lot better than the two or the four, but mainly just be aware if you do turn your cut and batches up, I just wanted to show you this to make you aware of how much it increases render time. And that's also because it's increasing memory usage. So personally, I leave mine at two. I just, I like to crank all my memory really into the nicer models. I feel that gives, gives me a lot better effect than turning up the cut and batches. But my main purpose of these kind of quick studies videos is just to show you what some of these settings do. So this is what the cut and batches does. So thank you for watching. I have many more on the way, including more quick studies.